Curve Finance is a titan of DeFi. It's the largest decentralized exchange in crypto, with about $20 billion worth of various cryptos locked on the platform. Aside from a great incentive structure, one of the big reasons for Curve's popularity is stablecoin swaps, which are more efficient on Curve than anywhere else. Deep liquidity is an advantage that allows Curve to keep stablecoin swaps as even as possible, but Curve also has a secret sauce in the form of its stable swap bonding curve. This bonding curve, explained here in the Curve Finance docs, is the mechanism that allows stablecoin pools on Curve to provide more even swaps than stablecoin pools built using traditional AMM bonding curves. Let's take a look at how these curves actually impact a DEX and its liquidity pools. This is the classic chart that shows the bonding curves used by three separate types of liquidity pools. The first curve is actually a straight line. It represents the constant sum formula. The second curve is the most common curve, the constant product formula, first introduced by Uniswap. This third blue line represents stable swap. The magic of the stable swap bonding curve lies in that flat middle section, where it resembles the first one, constant sum. Let's take a closer look at that constant sum curve. Bonding curves can be used to figure out what the exchange rate is between the tokens in the pool at any given time. To do that, let's start with the formula for the constant sum bonding curve. The formula is x plus y equals constant. That means that the bonding curve dictates that for any exchange happening in the pool, the end sum of tokens has to remain constant. For example, say the pool currently has 100 x tokens and 100 y tokens. If you add 10 x tokens, you can figure out how many y tokens you get back by plugging in the new number of X tokens, 110. The formula tells us that you get 10 Y tokens back, a one-to-one -one trade. As you can see, this constant sum formula does a great job of maintaining a one-to-one -one exchange rate. So it sounds perfect for stablecoins so far, but the constant sum formula has a flaw that prevents it from being used by DEXs for liquidity pool pairs like this. Imagine that there are only 10 Y tokens left out of the 200 total. That suggests that traders actually value the Y tokens more than the X tokens. According to the constant sum formula, someone could buy the last 10 Y tokens in the pool for that same one-to-one -one exchange rate, leaving 200 X tokens and zero Y tokens. That's the problem with the constant sum formula in DEX pools. If there's any difference between the price of the tokens in the pool, which there almost always is, then traders can take advantage of the one-to-one -one exchange rate to drain all of the more valuable tokens out of the pool. But we're talking about stable coins, not X coins or Y coins. So let's imagine a pool with USDT and USDC. This curve does work well for traders, in the sense that no matter what the ratio of the pool is, they can always trade one USDT for one USDC. But the problem remains that if there's an imbalance in prices elsewhere in the market, people will take advantage of this pool's one-to-one -one exchange rate. If the imbalance elsewhere in the market is big enough or it continues for long enough, traders can and will drain all of the more valuable stablecoin out of the pool. So how do you protect that smaller portion of more valuable tokens from getting drained completely out of the pool? Uniswap answered that question with the constant product formula. This formula is designed to maintain a constant product, meaning that the number of X tokens in the pool multiplied by the number of Y tokens in the pool must always equal a constant product. This curve was developed by Uniswap for pairs of tokens that were intended to shift in value. Here, if the pool started with 2.5 Bitcoin and 100k USDC, the product would be 250,000. This would reflect a market price of $40,000 per Bitcoin. Let's say a trader wants to buy some Bitcoin from the pool by adding $10,000 of USDC. Plugging in 110,000, the new number of USDC in the pool, we can divide our constant product by that new number to figure out that the pool will now hold 2.273 Bitcoin. That means that the trader received 0.227 Bitcoin for their 10,000 USDC. If we divide the 10,000 USDC that they put in by the number of Bitcoin they received, we can see they paid about 44,000 USDC per Bitcoin. The price moved up from $40,000 because the pool is constantly adjusting the balances based on supply and demand. If another trader makes a $10,000 USDC purchase, the formula changes again and now requires 2.08 Bitcoin to maintain the 250000 product. That means that the next $10,000 purchase receives 
0.193 Bitcoin out of the pool. In this case, the cost per Bitcoin is almost 52,000 USDC. The price moved almost 8,000, almost twice as much as during the last $10,000 purchase. You can see how as the pool grows increasingly weighted towards USDC, the price per Bitcoin increases exponentially. That price movement is represented by the long tails on this curve. In practice, liquidity pools for blue chips like Bitcoin are a lot deeper than $200,000 USDC. The larger the liquidity pool, the less the exchange rate changes during each trade. Now let's see how this bonding curve handles the USDT-USDC pair we were talking about earlier, assuming the pool is perfectly balanced with a TVL of $2 million. The largest stablecoin pools are actually closer to $2 billion, but we'll keep the math simple to see how slippage occurs. If the pool has 1 million of each stablecoin, then our constant is 1 billion. Now, say a trader wants to add 100,000 USDC in exchange for USDT. The new quantity of USDC would be 1.1 million. So we can plug 1.1 million into the formula to figure out that the pool would need 909,000 USDT to maintain the constant product of 1 billion. That means the trader gets about 91,000 USDT for their 100,000 USDC. Definitely not a one-to-one -one trade, right? And this effect accelerates as the pool gets more out of balance. If the next trader came and deposited 100,000 USDC without any trades in between, they would only receive about 76,000 USDT. That's because 1.2 million times 833,000 equals the constant of 1 billion. That means they would be paying 1.31 USDC per USDT, way overpriced. This bonding curve does have the advantage that it never allows the pool to be completely drained of either coin. However, at these prices, nobody would use the pool to exchange large amounts of stablecoins. So this model works all right for coins like Bitcoin that have a fixed supply and need to go up in price as the demand grows. But for stablecoins, the goal is to avoid that kind of price volatility. In practice, Uniswap can service the majority of stablecoin trades with very little slippage because of its high liquidity. In a constant product pool, adding more liquidity is the only defense against slippage. Uniswap's new V3 design leverages that mechanism by concentrating liquidity along certain areas of the curve. Despite that though, every transaction in a constant product pool will still incur some level of slippage. Let's take a look at another constant product stablecoin pool over on the Phantom Network. This pool only holds $30 million of liquidity, and as a result, the slippage on large transactions gets much more extreme. So, how can you make a pool that limits slippage even during large transactions? Enter Curve Finance and the Stable Swap Bonding Curve. To achieve this curve, Stable Swap combines both of the previous formulas and adds its own twist. We won't break down exactly how these added variables are calculated. The important thing is that gamma is an adjusting variable that is higher when the pool is more evenly balanced. In that case, the constant sum portion of the formula carries more weight with almost one-to-one -one exchanges. Once the pool falls below a certain balance threshold, then the curve begins to act like a constant product ratio, raising the price of the scarce token and preventing itself from ever becoming completely one-sided. So as long as the pool is balanced, transactions move along this flat section of the curve. Because this flat section is fairly large, we can tell that even a large transaction would still incur very little slippage, as long as it doesn't tip the ratio past a certain threshold. Comparing this to the constant product model, it's amazing how slippage is so much lower in this middle section of the stable swap curve. As you may know, stablecoins are a vital part of the crypto economy. By reducing slippage and improving large stablecoin trades, StableSwap is a crucial part of scaling the DeFi industry.